My name is Yvonne Dutra Leivas, and uh, I am a student at Graska. And uh, as a student of Graska, uh, also an uh, employee at the uh, Department of Museum Archaeology at Kalmar County Museum. And I'm also doing a PhD, and uh, my thesis is called Personal Item as Visual and Tactile Doors to the Past. But today's paper, it has more to do about some reflections I have, um, I have, I have about uh, my thesis. I, uh, I'm studying uh, the, uh, the outreach towards schools and uh, what schools have for need uh, from uh, contract archaeology. I'm uh, also studying how uh, personal items, special from uh, urban sites, can be used to improve a better understanding about uh, uh, archaeological knowledge. But today's topic is, like I said, uh, about some reflections I have. What about the content? Um, in line with the national goals for cultural heritage were clarified in Sweden, there have been changes in legislation and policy documents. The changes have, among other things, resulted in requirements for outreach for the archaeological results to a wider public in the directives and specifications for contract archaeology. All since uh, several of years in archaeology has a kind of standardized form for outreach being established, which often includes information through social media, guiding of the site, lectures, contact with national media, publications, etc. In more recent years, it is also possible to note that the development of the digital knowledge production and communication with the aim to reach as many different target groups as possible. Uh, and upon all that, it is common with educational programs for schools in collaboration and often conducted by educators from local museums. The assignment of co contract archaeology usually takes place in a limited period of time in different locations with different conditions and with different contractors. This often results in temporary solutions of uh, outreach for a specific uh, excavation. The purpose is usually informative, seeking to make awareness about archaeology as such, as well as through material culture, pick out narratives about the past. An effort that often results in a uh, sparing interest about archaeology, the excavation site and the past. An effort often also rewarded with overwhelming uh, positive response. But a sparing interest for archaeology or a sparing interest for the past is not good enough to make contract archaeology relevant for society. One contract archaeology's best defined target groups comprise schools. It is common to receive visits from schools on an excavation site and then often do they visit with an educational purpose with the framework of school education. When schools visit an archaeological site, they do have a further purpose beyond increase an interest for archaeology and an interest for the past. The school has educational goals that are to achieve and for sure they want to learn something they have a use for in their education. In general, a critical reflection of an archaeological education and its relevance for school education is lacking in contract archaeology. For archaeology to be relevant for the schools, the sector must become more aware about schools' interest in archaeology. To collaborate with the museums isn't enough here. The sector needs therefore look over and study what more specific can be of interest and relevance for the target groups and match it with what can contract archaeology can offer. This could result in more qualitative practices of mediation and increased relevance of contract archaeology in society. Moreover, archaeologists are many times hardly aware of their role as mediators in the process of producing meaning and relevance for their sector and society, many times because they often focus on preservation of the archaeological record. To work against a one-sided or underbalanced public archaeology, the sector of contract archaeology must put more interest in the interest of the audiences, 
work more integrated with the public issues and put more effort in doing interest analysis of the target groups. Furthermore, contract archaeology needs to a greater degree approach a public archaeology with a focus on communicative, communicative aspects concerning questions about what is mediated and why. Uh, this should be bo both fruitful and instructionally relevant in contract archaeology. Not until contract archaeology increases its awareness of what is being mediated and why can contract archaeology achieve this set of goals of heritage management. With that says, I will finish with the words that content matters. Thank you for listening.